we've got two diffraction patterns, A and B. Diagrams represent diffraction patterns formed by light falling on a single slit. The light of two different colors was directed, one color at, the, at a time, on the single slit. The diffraction patterns were obtained for the two different colors. In other words, we had an arrangement here with a slit, light falling on the slit, and we're going to get some kind of pattern arising, a diffraction pattern arising for that. We then, first of all, took one color, and we got a diffraction pattern A. Then we'd put another color in, and we got diffraction pattern B. Now, immediately we see all of this stuff. We, you can even go back to your uh, data sheet, and you can see sine theta is equal to m lambda over a. And this tells us about the angle, the angle between the point of the slit and these reaction, these fringes here, or these bright spots in the diffraction pattern. So in other words, for the first one is there, second one is there, third one is there, and here is the angle that we're talking about. You see, as the angle gets bigger and bigger, um, this value of m changes. Now, for a, lambda had a certain value, and a had a certain value, because a is the width of the slit, and that remained constant. So for a, lambda has a certain value. For b, lambda has a different value. a is the same. But what we see now is a pattern that is slightly more widely spaced, okay? In other words, theta was bigger here. If we just take theta as being the angle there, let's say, to there, this is, the slit is going to be back down here. You see that where m was equal to 1 for the first fringe, we had a fairly big angle where m was equal to 1 for this one, we had a much smaller angle. That is telling us that here, lambda b is greater than lambda a. In other words, the color of the light that we used for b is greater than the color of the light that was used for a. And so, the alternatives that I'm given here, we must see which of these gives us the option where the light, the wavelength, was greater for the B example than for A. And if we go through them, we find that the green light was used for A and red light was used for B. Your answer is going to be D because the wavelength of red is greater than the wavelength of green, and it's the only one where that happens. But I would like you to go and satisfy yourselves that none of the others could have been correct. Next question, a hardy annual. Always get them. Two identical bodies with a charge on them. You move them further apart, you bring them together, you take them apart, you change the charge on one or the other, you change the difference. And what you have to do is you have to apply the Coulomb's law where the force is proportional to the product of the charges and inversely proportional to the square of the distance between their centers. And it's really playing around with proportions. And one of them, we hope, will give you the right answer. Let's have a look. The centers of two identical spheres, they don't have an identical amount of charge on them, but they are identical, made of the same material, same size. So the charge distribution uh, will be, if, if there was Q on that and Q on the, this one, the distribution of charges would be the same on both. Now, as it happens, this one has twice the amount of charge that this one does. Distance between them is called R. The centers of the two identical spheres are R apart. They're carrying Q and 2Q, respectively. The magnitude of the electrostatic force between them, in other words, force is equal to K times Q times 2Q over R squared. So F, the force, is equal to 2 times K Q squared over R squared. That's what force is. Okay. Now the two spheres are brought into contact, and we know what's going to happen. The charge, the total charge between them, is going to be distributed. Distributed, I suppose, if I get the accent right. 
it's going to be distributed across the two of them. When we then separate them again, there is going to be an equal amount of charge on both. Okay, now this is actually quite a long question for, uh, uh, for a multiple choice. You won't get anything as complicated as this in the real exam, but it's a good question to test your knowledge. We separate them out to R over 2 apart. They're now one half of the distance apart, etc. The magnitude of the new force will be, okay, if the original charges were oppositely charged, let's take a look and see what happens in this case. They're oppositely charged. That one's positive, that's negative, or the other way around. Now, when they, when they touch, if they're oppositely charged, the overall charge that's left on them when they touch is going to be Q. And so when they separate out, it's going to be Q over 2 on each of them. And so for this case, we'll get F is equal to K times Q over 2 times Q over 2 over R over 2 times R over 2 because we square the distance apart. Now you see all of these 2's are going to go out and we're going to get F is K Q squared over R squared. Now before you get too excited, remember that this force, original force, was two times that amount of stuff. So therefore it's going to, this uh, will be F over two. Ah, aha. Uh -huh. F is equal to two times that. F is equal to just that. So therefore this force here is going to be half of the original force, okay, because kq squared over r squared is going to be f over 2. Wow, we got it right. However, having got that one, if you weren't too pushed for time, and we are pushed for time, you would have just gone and satisfied yourself that it could not have been any of these. What I would like you to do is to go through and try these three distractors over here and see what sort of answers you actually get because clearly none of these is, is supposed to be correct. Last question in the multiple choice is a circuit question and you're always going to get one of these. Um, the kinds of things where you have to decide what happens when you remove a resistor or you put another resistor in or you open a switch, that kind of question. Let's take a look. Learning Channel offers an extensive educational collection ranging from grades 8 to 12 in alignment with the national curriculum statement. We offer DVD and workbook sets in a number of different subjects. To buy the Learning Channel series, check out our website on www.learn.co.za or call us on 011 639 0179.